Chapter Three of Alice or the Wages of Sin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mary Schneider. Alice or the Wages of Sin by Frederick Worden Hangborn. Chapter Three. Quote, Business associations seldom reveal the inner life of a man. End quote. Mr. Dogier was in his office alone. Mr. Dogier was not a man to be easily put out of temper, that is, when business was good, as it was at present, but he was not feeling just right this morning, despite the fact that business was good and the firm of Dogier and Company was in a prosperous condition. The fact was that it was not business at all which troubled Mr. Dogier this morning. For forty years the firm of Dogier and Company had been in business, and now Mr. Dogier was in such a position that he might have retired altogether, had he felt like doing so, but he did not. Mr. Dogier was a man whom few understood, and with whom few could get along. Abrupt in speech, blunt even to incivility at times, he was a man who seldom won the cordiality of strangers yet those who knew him well understood that beneath his rugged exterior there was the heart of an honest upright man and respected him as a good citizen and the next best thing to a true gentleman a true man mr dogier had a wife a sweet-tempered woman who by the way was the only boss that mr dogier had for she knew how to manage him and a family of numerous children among them an adopted daughter who was very dear to him this girl was now eighteen years of age and as lovely a young woman as man ever gazed upon and it was about this very person that mr dogier was at present worried the girl was very dear to her adopted father and it was with no small degree of anxiety that he began to fear lest she might form an attachment which would bring her unhappiness or lifelong misery for young albert thornberry his junior partner who had been abroad in charge of the foreign business for several years was at home now and a guest at mr dogier's house and that worthy elderly gentleman had not failed being a keen observer to notice that Alice had already found favor in Albert's eyes, and that Albert had been not unkindly received by Alice. Mr. Dogier was not disposed to like this sort of a match, for the simple reason that he loved his girl too much to risk her happiness with a man of such a nature as he thought Thornberry's might be. So, while satisfied with his younger fellow businessman, as a business partner he did not relish the prospect of having him for a son-in-law mr dogier knew but little of albert's life while abroad he feared that it had not been of the kind to fit a man to become a good husband hence it was that mr dogier was not in a good humor on the day of which we write and he was going over in his mind the pros and cons of the matter when Thornberry himself entered the office. Mr. Dogier was right. Albert was a handsome fellow, and a dangerous one for young girls to know. Thirty-seven years of age, tall and as finely formed as a first-class soldier, beautiful in face as a Greek ideal, and possessed of all the culture of a Finnish gentleman, he was a man eminently fitted to win the hearts of women, and if reports were true, they were not a few who had already been captivated by his graces. He was credited with having committed all the follies of mankind except marriage, but really no one had ever charged him with proof of being guilty of any dishonorable act. It was only gossip, perhaps, but nevertheless Mr. Dogier would have preferred that Albert should have remained abroad or else that he should have waited until Alice was well married, say to his son Joe, a matter which may have had something to do with the emotions of Mr. Dogier's heart, before returning to America. However, Albert was here, and although he might do his best, there was little hope that Mr. Dogier would be able to engineer this matter in his own way, 
if albert should strive to do as his senior feared that he might as the junior partner entered the room mr dozier could not help admiring the graceful dignity of the gentleman who stood before him and gave him a genuine good morning it was the instinctive homage which the commoner man always pays to the gentleman even in a republic where one man is as good as another and as the low emigrant who comes here imbued with a foreigner's hatred of the government says and which being translated means i refuse to recognize the fact that there are differences between men other than those laid down by law good morning sir said albert cordially extending his hand and drawing up a chair i see that my old friend has lost none of his methodical habits always on hand at the time set and always interested in his work i wish that i might say as much for the junior member but i fear that let me tell you let me tell you interrupted the elder with his customary abruptness such talk as that is all nonsense your management abroad has been first class however as i have always said there is nothing like system and everybody should acquire it true replied the other systematic habits are good things to form as the schoolmaster said when he thrashed the whole school every morning in order to get that part of the work done and out of the way for the day but to a single man without home ties or attachments system in everything is difficult of attainment now if a man is married yes yes said mr dogier snapping his fingers and blowing out his cheeks a habit of his when in earnest that's just it you are a right good business man thornberry and have plenty of brains but you don't settle and i tell you a fellow must settle down if he wants to make a man of himself that is an idea which i have had in my head for a long time sir replied the other but circumstances have not been favorable in the first place marriage in my way of thinking means more than a simple living together in peace and harmony love and comfort of course all these must be included in connubial bliss but these alone would be to a man of my temperament simply a stupid bondage a sort of mutual stagnation in which neither party would become any better wiser or nobler than each was at the start i'm afraid your ideal is rather above that of most of us replied the elder perhaps it is said albert but it is an ideal and as such i must abide by it or remain as i am yes but let me tell you said mr dogier that if half the rumors i have heard concerning you when abroad be correct your ideal does not seem to worry you much in your practical life from you sir replied albert knowing you as i do these words may be taken without umbrage but remember please that i have never been in the habit of making my private life a subject of conversation and that what is past is past if there are any dark passages in my history they are written and i hope sealed in secrecy and it is not my intention to review them at the present day but to profit by them in the future and use them as guides to a better life i am now at an age when as you say i should settle and could i find the wife whom my heart craves i would be only too happy to wed her and cherish her as a wife should be cherished your advice sir has always been good and your judgment in business matters sound but i fear that on the subject of marriage i should fail to find even in you a satisfactory confessor for my heart and soul let us drop that subject and look over the business very well said mr dogier and the two men were very soon absorbed in business late that afternoon as mr dogier walked slowly home the conversation of his young partner kept recurring to his mind and the more he thought over it the more it puzzled him he had heard queer rumors concerning this young man unverified to be sure but still ugly enough to make him dislike the present announcement but there was a frankness yet reserve and dignity about thornberry which almost convinced mr dogier that the rumors must be false perhaps after all it would be better to trust the word of a man whom he had always found honourable in business and disbelieve the rumours alice was it may be the very young woman who might fill albert's ideal and if so what arrangement could be nicer both socially and financially 
he would dismiss the matter altogether as love affairs were not in his line anyway yes those rumors and mr dogier walked thoughtfully home End of chapter three